all together to begin our service. Within the local authority of Liverpool, this is the last of the stones that we shall be dedicating in memory of those who were awarded the Victoria Cross in the First World War. And so today we gathered together to commemorate the actions of Second Lieutenant Stanley Bowie, VC. And we will also commemorate him and the sacrifice that he made. We shall hear in our service about the events of this day, the 1st of December in 1917, when the enemy was close and were attacking the British machine guns and uh, the, he went and he attacked them with bombs and he caused a surrender of 30 men and obviously as a result of the actions, and I'm sure you, many of you know, uh, he was mortally wounded and subsequently died. So as we gather we celebrate his act of heroism, we celebrate the lives that he saved and the contribution that he made in that action and we also pray for him and those who mourn for him today. We remember with thanksgiving and sorrow those whose lives in world wars and conflicts past and present have been given and taken away. Almighty and eternal God, from whose love in Christ we cannot be parted, either by death or, or life, hear our prayers and thanksgivings for all, all whom we remember this day. Fulfill in them the purpose of your love, and bring us all with them to your eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Most holy God and Father, hear our prayers for all who strive for peace and all who fight for justice. Help us who today remember the cost of war to work for a better tomorrow. And as we commend to you lives lost in terror and conflict, bring us all in the end to the peace of your presence. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So now may we together pray with the confidence as our saviors taught us the Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Right Worship called the Lord Mayor of Liverpool, Councillor Malcolm Kennedy. <coughs> uh, welcome to this centenary commemoration and unveiling of a Victoria Cross stone in the honour of Second Lieutenant Hen Stanley Henry Parry Bowie from the 1st to the 4th Battalion. The Royal Scots Fusiliers. The Victoria Cross is the highest and most prestigious award for gallantry in the face of the enemy that can be awarded to British and Commonwealth forces. In 2014, the government launched a campaign to recognise the First World War centenary commemorations and honour those men who awarded the Victoria Cross. Cross Paving Stones programme is part of these centenary commemorations. It is a national scheme run by the Department for Communities and Local Government, which will see every World War I Victoria Cross recipient remembered in this way. In Liverpool alone, there are a total of 10 stones which have been sited in a location specific to where the individuals were either born or may have lived. Stanley Bowie was born on the 9th of April, 1896, at 3 Danube Street in Toxteth, which is only a short distance 
from where we stand today. By 1905, Stanley and his family had moved to Blackpool. And during this time, he co-founded the first Blackpool Scout Troop, which our guest speaker, Mr. Darrell Murray, will cover in further detail shortly. Before the war, Stanley was a keen athlete and also a member of the St. John Ambulance Brigade. However, when war was declared, he went to France and served in the Royal Army Medical Corps at only 18 years of age. The action for which Stanley Bowie received his Victoria Cross took place on the 1st of December 1917 at El Berth, Palestine during the Battle of Jerusalem while serving with the Royal Scots Fusiliers. Unfortunately, Stanley was mortally wounded at the point of surrender. Today, we honour the local impact of the Great War and the gallantry and selfless actions of 2nd Lieutenant Stanley Bowie, who exactly 100 years to this very day fought for the freedom and peace that we all enjoy today. Therefore, as we stand here today in this peaceful park, we should reflect and give thanks to Stanley and others who gave so much to their country and our liberty. Shortly, I will be unveiling a commemorative stop in honour of 2nd Lieutenant Stanley Bowie, which will ensure that his bravery is recognised for years to come. The stone will sit alongside two other local heroes who have also received the Victoria Cross in World War I. And I hope that these stones continue to educate local communities about the important role that Stanley and Liverpool played in the Great War. Before I conclude, May I also take the opportunity to thank all those who have organised and taken part in today's service. In particular, our guest speakers and military representatives, including those from the Royal Regiment of Scotland. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now my great pleasure to invite Mr. Dara O'Malley, the Deputy County Commissioner of Merseyside Scouts to tell us more. Thank you. I share two uh, things with Stanley Bowie. First of all, we're both scouts. And secondly, I was also born on the 9th of April, but not in 1896, I guess. <laughs> uh, as the Lord Mayor said, his family uh, grew up here moved via Cheshire and went up to Blackpool in 1905. The key part for us as scouts was that in 1908, uh, a former general, Robert Baden-Powell, produced um, a series of pamphlets called Scouting for Boys, and this inspired young boys around the country to form patrols and then form scout troops. In Blackpool, Stanley uh, helped to form the Hound Patrol in 1908 when he was 12, and then together with another patrol called the Lions, they then persuaded uh, an adult to take on the role of Scoutmaster, and the first Blackpool Scout Group was born. <coughs> so many members of the first Blackpool Scout Group died in the First World War uh, that they didn't reopen it in 1919, but the title was held in remembrance of all Scouts who'd lost their lives during the Great War. In total, across scouting in the, uh, in the UK, 17 scouts were awarded the Victoria Cross. Stanley himself was only 21, as we heard. The youngest scout was actually a boy first class. He was 16, Jack Cornwall, when he died at the Battle of Jutland. When he left school, Stanley was employed by a solicitor in Blackpool. 
as we'd heard, was a keen athlete and swimmer and also a member of the St John's Ambulance Brigade. And this led him, at the outbreak of war, to go to France, apparently at one hour's notice when he was only 18. Here he was assigned to the Royal Army Medical Corps and assigned to a hospital in Boulogne and then sent to various other parts of France. At the end of 1915, however, he was invalided home, suffering from appendicitis and synovitis. He then spent the next six months at the King's Military Hospital, uh, Military Convalescent Hospital in Blackpool. Now I'll pass you to Bill Sargent, who will tell us about his military career. Thanks, Darren. For many years, all the records showed that Stanley Bowie was born in Ayrshire, in Scotland. Not least because that's what Stanley told them when he enlisted in the, uh, the Ayrshire Yeomanry in 1916. This changed completely when Michael Looms, who's the curator of the museum, which Darren referred to, got in touch with me to say that he believed that Stanley had actually been born in Liverpool. We did a little bit of digging and eventually found his birth certificate. And of course it was true. And he was born just across the road here in Danube Street. I think it's more than likely that uh, he deliberately misled the authorities up in Scotland. As you've heard, he was discharged, medically discharged, and he probably feared that he might be accepted. So he told him the white lie. But to take up Dara's story, Stanley's potential was quickly recognised and he was promoted with Corporal in September 1916. And within three months, was selected for an officer's training course. And on the 18th of April 1917, as a second lieutenant with the 4th Battalion of the Royal Scots Fusiliers, he sailed to Alexandria in Egypt. They then moved forward to fight against the Turks in Palestine. It's been said that immediately before leaving for Egypt, Stanley confided in his local pastor at the Claremont Congregational Church in Blackpool that he felt he wouldn't return. And in August that year, he wrote home to his brother Geoffrey and said, although I've spent a lot of time here in the promised land looking for all that milk and honey said to be flowing here, up to now the only flowing things are plenty of nasty explosive shells sent over for free by a benevolent enemy. The 4th Battalion, as part of the Egyptian Expeditionary Force, steadily drove the Turks northwards through Palestine as the British pushed on towards Jerusalem. But the enemy, reinforced by troops of the German 7th Army, stubbornly resisted. And on the 1st of December 1917, exactly 100 years ago today, the British came up against the sudden Turkish counter-attack at a place called El Berf. The Turks rapidly made ground and managed to reach within throwing distance of the Allied firing line. The grenades se severely affecting Stanley and his comrades. And this young 21-year-old officer rushed the enemy by himself, hurling grenades, as you've heard, causing a number of the enemy to surrender. And then when he ran out of grenades, he went back to fetch more. And it was then that he was mortally wounded. Stanley died on the 4th of December 1917 and on the 8th of January 1918 his mother received a telegram which every mother and wife dreaded. The King and Queen deeply regret the loss you and the army have sustained by the death of your young son in the service of your country. Their Majesties truly sympathise with you in your sorrow. Stanley's mother was presented with her son's VC by King George V on the 2nd of March 1918 when she attended together with the relatives of eight other men who had perished in the war and who had all been awarded VC. Stanley was buried in Gaza Military Cemetery where his body still lies. On his headstone are inscribed words chosen by his mother. It reads, the blood the blood of heroes is the seed of freedom. 
On the 17th of September 1918, his mother was present when a bed was endowed by the mayor and citizens of Blackpool in the town's first Victoria Hospital, and it was called the Bowie Cot. The commemorative plaque declared that this cot is endowed by the corporation on behalf of the town's people of Blackpool as a memento of a noble son's supreme sacrifice. On 6th of April 2003, a memorial plaque commissioned by the trustees of the Scout Museum was unveiled in the museum, and that reads that it's in memory of Stanley Bowie, VC, the first Blackpool Scout troop, and all other former Scouts who gave their lives for their country. Those of you who are familiar with the memorial at Abercrombie Square, which depicts Noel Chavas, VC and Bar, but commemorates all of those sons of Liverpool who are awarded the VC, will know that their names appear around the base of the memorial, but you won't find Stanley Bowie's name. And that's because when we erected the memorial, we were totally unaware of his Liverpool connections. Hopefully, that'll be rectified in due course. And I'd like to hand you over to Sergeant Major Richard Grisdale with the 2nd Battalion, the Royal Regiment of Scotland, who will read the citation for Stanley's Victoria Cross. Tuesday the 12th of February 1918, the War Office. His Majesty the King has graciously pleased to approve the award of the Victoria Cross to the following mentioned officer. Second Lieutenant, Lieutenant Stanley Henry Perry Bowie, late Royal Scots Fusiliers. For most conspicuous bravery, when the enemy in large numbers had managed to crawl forward within 30 yards of our firing line and with bombs and automatic rifle, we're keeping down the fire of our machine guns. He rushed forward alone with bombs right up to the enemy doing great execution and causing the surrender of around 30. As he turned to go back for more bombs, he was mortally wounded and the moment when the enemy were about to surrender. moment the Lord Mayor of Liverpool will unveil the centenary stone. Would you please stand for that and for the exhortation and our act of remembrance. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, though the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember that.
by the Lord Mayor on behalf of the City of Liverpool. standing to sing Abide With Me on the reverse of the order of service. In light, in 
Let us pledge ourselves anew to the service of God and our fellow men and women, that we may help encourage and comfort others and support those working for the relief of the needy and for the peace and welfare of the nations. Lord God our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all humankind in the cause of peace, for the relief of want and suffering and for the praise of your name. Guide us by your Spirit Give us wisdom, give us courage, give us hope, and keep us faithful now and always. Amen. God grant the living grace to the departed rest, to the Church, the Queen, the Commonwealth, and all people, unity, peace, and concord, and to us and all God's servants, life everlasting. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.